Are you new to Bible study and just have no idea where to begin? Well, I'm going to teach you some things today that I wish someone would have taught me before I started to learn to study the Bible. I've got six things for you today, and they're really good, so you're going to want to keep watching. Hello, beautiful Nikki here from Crazy Simple Truth Ministries, and I'm so glad you're here today. Yay! Because I have six things that I wish someone would have told me when I first became a Christ follower and wanted to learn to study my Bible. Bible study can be so intimidating, and you hear so many things about, oh, we went to this Bible study group, and Carol went to this, and we were friends with Jean, and she, you know, whatever. And they got their coffee, and, you know, they're looking cute, and they got their Bible and all their little pens, and you're thinking, I don't even know where to begin. Like, I don't even know. Well, I'm not really going to tell you how to begin in this video, although I have lots of videos like that. Um, but you can go to my playlist, Bible Study Methods, and you will get some tips there. But what I am going to tell you is some things that I wish I would have known. So the first thing is... Don't start at the beginning. Yes, there is a beginning and there is an end. And the very first words say in the beginning. So that is true. But it, don't start in the beginning. Don't start there. Um, let me tell you how the Bible is divided. If you're a brand new newbie, 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 you may have heard in church or from someone else that there's an Old Testament and a New Testament. So the Bible is split. There are 39 books in the Old Testament and 22. I hope I'm telling you the right thing. 22 books in the New Testament. If it's not, I'll put it on the screen, the correct numbers. And they're split, not in half, obviously, 39, 22. But to, Old Testament is before Jesus, so Jesus concealed. New Testament is after Jesus, so Jesus revealed. And um, that's the way it's split. Now, on top of it being split that way, each... Um, split of Old Testament, New Testament, there are books, little individual books. So there are 66 individual books in the Bible. And each book appears to be a chapter in a whole book because the Bible does go together. It is a whole story and it does go together. But you don't want to start at the beginning. So each book is a chapter and each is not really a chapter. Oh, each chapter so each book of the Bible, like you would have Matthew, the book of Matthew, and within Matthew, you would have chapters, one, two, three, four, five, and within the chapters, you would have verses. So when your pastor says to you, turn to John 1, 1, you would turn to the book of John. Don't be afraid to use your index. That's a, that's a bonus tip that I didn't put in my tips. Don't be afraid to use the index. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay if it takes you a while to get to it. Don't worry about it. Use the index. That's what it's for. Don't be afraid to do that. Don't be afraid if the girl down the pew is like turning it right there and she knew exactly where to find it. It's okay. I still use the index. So use the index. But when he says turn to John 1, 1, you're going to go to the book of John. So whatever name he gives you, he or she, he gives you, you're going to go to that book. And then you're going to go to chapter 1, verse 1. So John 1, 1. So that's something really important that you need to know in order to study the Bible because if you don't know where to find the verses, if you don't know how the Bible works, how it's laid out, then how are you going to study it, right? Right. So my number two tip is that it's not chronological. You just told me don't start at the beginning, so I already know that. So what are you going to tell me now? Well, what I'm going to tell you is the books of the Bible are arranged in the way that they are arranged for a reason. The Bible is literary genius. These ordinary men wrote extraordinary pieces of art, of art literature. I mean, they are beautiful because they were inspired by the Holy Spirit, which is God himself. And if you don't know what a genre is, it is simply a type of writing. So the Bible is split up the way that it's split up for a reason. In the, the Old Testament and the New Testament, there is an order to those. So let's divide those out for a minute. Okay, we're going to go to the Old Testament and we're going to look at the orders of the books. So I'm going to grab a Bible so I can show you what I'm talking about. And I apologize if you heard kiddos in the back, but that's my house. Um, so the first five books of the Bible sometimes are referred to as the law. No, yes, the law, the law. These are the first five books of the Bible. Um, and those are important, but I'm going to get to in a little bit why they're not important because you don't want to start at the beginning in a little bit. But first five books, the law. So these are history books, okay? 
The next how many ever books are also history books, and those start with Joshua. And those, all of those are telling the history of God's people, the Israelites, the Hebrew people. It's their history. Okay, the whole thing is their history because they're all God's people and we are God's people and we fit in this Bible too, believe it or not. The next books are called wisdom literature or wisdom books or poetry books. There's lots of things that people call them. And those start in the book of Job. So Job, Proverbs, Psalms, um, Ecclesiastes, Song of Solomon, those are all um, like poems, songs, poetry, that type of literature, liter that type of literary genre. So the next group is the prophets. And these are people that God gifted, God spoke through them. So they weren't necessarily the ones writing this. Sometimes they were, sometimes it was someone else scribing it for them, but they were speaking the word of God through, the, through them, like God was speaking through them. And so these are prophets. These are people that God sent, that God used to convict his people of their sins and get them to turn the right way. Now there are major prophets and minor prophets in the Bible. And I always thought until recently, honestly, recently, um, that the minor prophets were minor because they just weren't as important, but that really isn't true at all. So there's the major prophets first and then the minor prophets. And really it just means that the minor prophets, it's a shorter book. That's all it means. So they're just as important. I, I didn't know that. I just learned that. And you know, you're always learning. You're always learning. Okay, yeah, so I seem like the Bible study boss. I got all these videos about Bible study. I do not know it all, trust me. God is teaching me more than he's teaching you through my YouTube channel, believe it or not. Okay, the next books after the, um, what did I call them? <laughs> the prophets is the new Testament. So the New Testament starts with the Gospels, which are back to another history of God's people. And those are Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Those are the Gospels. Those are the good news. And following that is the book of Acts. So Acts isn't part of the Gospels, but it is part of the history in the New Testament. So it's very important. Um, then we are going to the letters. And these are next after the book of Acts. And these are letters that God's people have written to other churches or God's people. And these are super instructional. So these are super good um, if you want to learn how to live a Christian life. So are the Gospels, but I'll get to that later. And then the book of Revelation is the very last book in the Bible. It's so confusing, but yet so beautiful. And it is prophetic. So it is a prophecy, even though it's not considered one of the prophets or one of the, yeah, the prophets, one of the prophets um, writing it. It's actually one of Jesus's disciples writing it. Um, it is a prophetic book. So it's poetic and prophetic. That's the type of literary genre that it is. So that is important. And that I wanted you to know, because I wish I would have understood that long ago. So that's really something that I was just learning in the last year and a half, too, um, is that those are divided that way for a reason. Once you know that, then it helps you find the books easier because you, you can identify what type of literary genre it is, possibly. Maybe not as a newbie, but you will eventually, I promise you. And then you'll be able to find the books faster. Number three, no one and is an expert. Me. There are a million more people that are way more of an expert than me. Billions of people. Probably many of you watching this are better than me. But God gifted me in the ability to teach. And he gave me such a fire for his word that I feel like I've been called to teach you how to study his word. Even though I am not a literal, I'm not a, even though I am not a, biblical scholar. I didn't go to school for this. I believe that he gifted me to show you my passion. And in that, you will get a passion for the word of God. That's my hopes. That's my hopes and my dreams. So if no one is an expert, what do you do? Where do you start? How are you going to get information? How are you going to learn about it? How are you going to learn how to study the Bible? Well, this is one of the coolest things God did. Seriously, God put himself in the body of the Holy Spirit in us. I don't know if he has a body. He doesn't have a, I don't even get into that. You're a beginner and I'm still learning. So don't even get into that. But the Holy Spirit is in you. He's a spirit and he's God. And he lives in you. If you have given your life to Christ, he lives in you. He lives in you. And he 
gives you everything you need to study the Bible. Seriously, if you had a Bible and you were stuck out on an island, you would know what you need to know. No, you wouldn't know all the scholarly things that the experts know, but nobody's an expert and everybody has the Holy Spirit in them that accepted Christ as their personal Lord and Savior. So you would have what you need to know. You don't need to have all of these other tools to learn the Bible. They are helpful and I teach a lot about those and I use those a lot, but just know that no one is an expert and you have the Holy Spirit just as much as this person does or this person does or this person does. Same Holy Spirit in you that's in me or in anybody else. Number four, Jesus is Jesus the reason. Jesus is the reason. Jesus is the reason. Jesus is the reason. How many times can I say that? Jesus is the reason. Old Testament, okay, is Jesus concealed. New Testament is Jesus revealed, meaning we didn't know who the Messiah was in the Old Testament, but it talked about him a lot. In fact, in every book of the Bible, there is some message about the Savior. <laughs> the New Testament is Jesus revealed because God brought him to the earth. And so if you're going to start reading the Bible as a beginner, you want to remember Jesus is the reason. Jesus is the son of God, but Jesus is God. And Jesus is who we want to learn about if we are new at studying the Bible. And we want to read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Those are the first four books of the New Testament the most important books, as far as I'm concerned, in the whole Bible, because as far as I'm concerned as a Bible study tip teacher, because you're going to learn about Jesus. And Jesus is the reason. He is the reason. He is the man. He is the bomb. He is everything. And so start there. Pick one. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. Doesn't matter which one. Just pick one. Pick an easy one. Doesn't matter. Pick a short one. Pick a long one. Pick a, I mean, because you like their name. It doesn't matter. Matthew, Mark, Luke, or John. Pick one. Start there. Jesus is the reason. The very beginning of the Bible to the very end of the Bible, Jesus is everywhere. But his specific historical story of his life is in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And you will learn the most about him. You will learn about who he was, what he believed in, what he taught, what he taught us not to do. You will learn his heart for God's people. You will learn so much in the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. My next advice is to read Acts because Acts Little, little bit of side info here. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. Luke was a physician and he was meticulous about listening to people's stories about Jesus. He never met Jesus, but he was listening to people's stories about Jesus and documenting it all. And he was a physician. So he's very meticulous about what he researched and what he wrote. Luke wrote the book of Luke and the book of Acts. And at one time they were actually all one, one thing. Okay. So I, my favorite book of the Bible is Luke. A lot of people don't start there. They think it's more complicated. They think maybe you should start in John. I love Luke. I love Luke because he's so cool. Like he didn't even meet Jesus and he interviewed all these different people and compiled this information that is amazing. Number five, one verse can be deceiving. Okay. So you learn, okay, let, let me give you an example. Let me give you an example. Let me get out my prayerful planner here, my favorite planner. This is not a sponsored video. This is just my favorite planner. And Jennifer, who makes these planners, she's my new best friend. She doesn't know it yet. But she's my new best friend. And uh, so I love my prayerful planner because it not only plans my day, but it has a daily scripture, which is cool. But you can get a daily scripture on an app, just one scripture. Now, here's the thing that you have to be careful of. Okay, so here is a verse. Praise be to the Lord, to God our Savior, who daily bears our burdens. Psalm 68, 19. Now, you could take that verse and you could say, oh, well, we don't have any burdens then because God's supposed to, well, maybe I don't have God because if he's supposed to bear our burdens every day, like, why am I living this mess of a life? Like, I don't get it. Like, we're going to praise him and he should be bearing our burdens. And do you know what I'm saying? I mean, I'm just making stuff up, but you get it. You get it. You can't take one verse and pull it out and, and try to expect um, the Holy Spirit to show you what it means. Now, that being said, you can learn a lot from one verse. And I have done several videos recently where I've done um, Bible studies in my planner. So with your daily verse, wherever you get it from, it doesn't matter. Just get a daily verse and you can use that then to study. But as a newbie, I would be very careful with pulling out one verse two verses, three verses, I'd be careful because so much more to Bible study 
than that. So much more. Now, don't let that intimidate you because um, that's what I'm here for. That's what I'm here for. So, hey, if you haven't subscribed before, then you're going to want to subscribe because I'm cool like that. Like, that's what I want to teach you. I'm going to give you this deep desire to fall in love with the Word of God because it can change your life. Like, literally change my life. People say the word context is key or context is important or don't pull a verse out of context or whatever it is that they say. What does context mean? You know, like, what are they talking about? Well, that's what I was showing you with the one verse a day is you could very easily take that and manipulate it to mean what you want. Now, I have done plenty of, um, not maybe studies, but plenty of, I've had plenty of revelations from the Lord just looking at one verse. Like literally just opening up my Bible to a verse and being like, eh, that one's not speaking to me. Turn another one. Eh, that one's not speaking to me. Turn another one. Eh, that one's not speaking. Oh, wow. And sure enough, it'll be something that I'm going through. And is it exactly what the author meant when he was writing it? No, he didn't know Nikki Drake and he was not writing about my trials that I'm having right now. No, but God will speak to me through one verse sometimes and you will want to subscribe for sure and keep watching because I'll tell you how that's done. But don't worry about that right now. You won't feel the Holy Spirit in you. It wasn't like magic whistles and stuff that went off when you accepted Christ. So um, you won't feel him unless you read the word of God and study it. And the only way to learn to hear him not audibly, but hear him in your heart is to read and study the word of God. So that's when people say, oh, the Holy Spirit told me that or God told me that. No, um, they really didn't hear him. Wait, some people might have heard God talk. So it is possible. Anyway, don't pull a verse out of context. Um, you're going to want to keep watching because I do teach you how to get into more in-depth Bible study. But this is just a little tip that I wish I would have known when I first started Bible study because nobody told me that. Nobody told me that. They'd just be pulling verses out here and there. And I didn't understand how to interpret it or what it meant or what I needed to research in the background to understand it. I didn't know that. So it's okay if you don't know that. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. The more you read, the more you listen to Bible study teachers, the more that you go to Bible studies, the more that you go to church, the more that you you read commentary, the more Christian books you read, you're going to learn those things. So don't worry about it right now. And here's the cool thing about Bible study, Bible reading and Bible study, is it stacks up on top of each other. So you learn this, very basics, and then you start learning more and you start learning more and you start learning more. And it's so cool. And the great thing about the Bible, this is another cool thing about God. The Bible says that it is living and active. It is so true. It is living and active. Like people who've been studying the Bible for 60 years can open it up and read a chapter and be like, wow, that fit what I'm going through. Or wow, I never noticed that about it because the Bible is living and active. God uses it at different times with different people in different ways, exactly how you need it. And when you go to study the Bible, it's not always going to be woohoo, look what you learned. No, sometimes it's not. And that's okay too. And number six is don't no do it alone. No, no one has no gotta be alone. <laughs> No. <laughs> Loners don't got to be alone. Loners don't got to be alone. You got to do it with someone else, preferably people that live by you. Okay. You want to find a local body of believers, a church that teaches from the Bible. Okay. We're not religious. If you are a Christ follower, you, you read from the Bible, you learn from the Bible. Your pastor should be teaching from the Bible. You should not be following religious rules and regulations. We are free in Christ. And so you want to find a group of believers locally that you can go and meet with, preferably once a week, maybe twice a week. If you go to church on Sundays, you go to church on Wednesday nights, and you go to a ladies' Bible study, then you're set. You're going to learn so much. And no, that's not too much, because you want to submerge yourself with people who have the same beliefs that you have. And a little tip here, a little bonus tip, is if you join a women's Bible study, do it with the older ladies. I'm not kidding you. They are so wise. One of the first couples Bible study that we joined was with this couple and they were so wise. Like, wow, they were amazing. Like the little old man was so stinking cute and he would like start to fall asleep and you'd think he's sleeping, but then all of a sudden he'd rattle up something and say it. And I'm like, wow, he knows so much. So don't be afraid to join the group of little old ladies because I'm telling you, they got it going on, girlfriend. They got it going on.
Another really cool thing about group Bible study in, in your local church is that um, you hold each other accountable. So you'd be like, hey, we're Nikki this week. Shay, why weren't you here? You know, girl, you need to come back because this is important, okay? And um, so you're gonna, they're going to hold you accountable. Plus, you're going to learn from them. Like I just said, the little old ladies, you're going to learn from them. You're going to be held accountable. And you're going to get to kind of bounce ideas off of each other so that you understand it and your questions can be answered. And no question is stupid in a good Bible study group with good, true, Christ-following Christians. No question is stupid, so don't be afraid to ask. By the way, if you have any beginner Bible study questions that you have, really, if you have any questions at all, but if you have any beginner Bible study questions, or even better yet, any videos that you would like to see, will you let me know? Just type in the comments, beginner Bible study. And if you don't want to be specific, just if you're new to Bible, how about this? If you're new to Bible study, put new student, new student, new student here. That's all you gotta do. Just put it there and I'll know, oh, okay, yep, I need some more Bible study beginner videos because she's new and she's new and maybe he's new and she's new and she's new and I will make some more. I think that's all I have to say today. <laughs> I think that's all I have to say today. I hope those six tips were super helpful. You are so amazing. Like you sat through this entire video with me and watched my craziness of my hand movements and my jumping and my getting distracted and my um, children being loud out there. And God bless you for doing that. <laughs> I hope it was helpful to you. So if you haven't subscribed yet, make sure you do. And hey, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Like I said, I want to know if you need more beginner Bible study videos. So let me know, beginner study, beginner study, beginner study, or specifically let me know the tips. And hey, share this with your friends, because if you have friends on Facebook or wherever it is, share it with your friends because they may need some Bible study tips too. If you are a Christ follower, we all need to be in the word of God all the time, not all the time, and not even every day, even though it, the ideal thing is every day. Oh, don't worry about that either, girl. Don't worry about that. If you're not reading and studying the Bible every day, it's okay. It's okay. You're not going to go to hell, I promise you. But, but if you subscribe to my channel, you'll learn and get motivated and really want to be in the Bible every day because you will fall in love with the word of God like I'm in love with the word of God. And I still have so much to learn, so much to learn. So you are beautiful. God loves you. And I will see you in the next video. Bye. Oh, hey, there's some links at the end. Make sure you, you click on those so you can watch those videos because those are really cool too. Okay, bye. Mm. So and you've got fishermen, you've got teachers, you've got, um, I mean, it, you, I don't know what they are. I don't know, but they're just, you know, they're just ordinary people like you and me, you know, you know, okay. But it doesn't mean that it's not history because it's all history. It's all Greek to me. Ha! Huh? That's kind of funny because the New Testament was written in Greek. Nikki, that really wasn't funny at all. Okay, well, I thought it was kind of funny. <laughs> it's kind of a dad joke. My husband, he, just, he asked me last night, he said, do you think dad's just like, they just come up with this stuff when they become a dad? Or like, why do they come to Okay, I mean, they don't care about this. We're still on number two. Sorry. We're still on number two here. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I hear my son singing. Eric, I'm trying to record. Shut your door. Anyway, you need to subscribe because there's so many things that there's, yeah, I don't even know what I was saying as possible, but I've never heard him talk. I don't think. <laughs> They're really loud out there. Children! Children, I'm filming. Yeah, what? it's his problem. We have no light. They're in, in the closet. Yeah. Okay, then get some out of her bay. You got a poopy problem. <laughs> We're out of baby wipes. Get them out of the diaper bag. It'll all be okay. Mom's almost done. Okay.